What's going on everyone? TM24 Plays here and we are back with some more Marvel Snap content. Now today was supposed to be the ranking of the four drops, but since I hit infinite the other day, I just wanted to share the three decks that I used during my climb. So I'm going to kind of go over those decks, the different lines of play, um, the different uses for the cards that I had, and just kind of break those down real quickly with you. But before I do, just take a quick look here at this graphic. As you guys can see, most of my watch time is coming from people not subscribed. So if you could take just a quick moment, go hit that subscribe button, maybe turn on the bell so that you get a notification every time I post a new video. Um, it would really help me out. But for now, let's get into these uh, deck reviews. All right. So the first deck that I used to help me hit infinite um, was this Sheephanol deck. I don't know what other people are calling it, but essentially it's the She-Hulk and Infinite deck. Um, you know, maybe you've got Psylocke in there. Maybe you've got Magic. I've got both. Um, but this is the deck that helped me early on in my climb. Um, once I started seeing, you know, more leeches and arrows, this deck was not as effective. But early on, it helped. And there were three main lines of play that I saw with this deck um, that typically led to me winning games. So in the first one, you're running Sunspot on one. Um, I think that's a pretty clear, easy option. And then you armor up on two. Three, you can kind of feel free to skip. Maybe you play something, maybe you don't. If you do get those two down, though, then you feel pretty good. Four, if you can Moon Girl, and ideally you're hitting She-Hulk, that's awesome. Five, you hit magic to extend the game. You're skipping six so that on turn seven, ideally you can play two She-Hulks and an Infinite. So that's my first line that I saw that, you know, it's typically the strongest line. It gets you the most power. You're dropping 40 power on turn seven. Um, your Sunspot by now has grown huge. Ideally, you're playing Sunspot, Armor, Moon Girl, Magic, maybe all on the same line, maybe not. But um, that's the first line that I saw Um that really ended up working out uh the next line kind of like a second option here is you know ideally you'd love to go sunspot armor if you can't a one drop maybe an ice man maybe a cork feels pretty good i really really like goose i think he's super strong so playing goose and then maybe a cosmo or a different one or a two drop and then four you're going psylocke um, now ideally you have both she hulk and infinite in your hand so that you can skip five and then on turn six you are playing she hulk and infinite um, so similar to the first line just you're doing it in six turns instead of seven and you don't have that extra she hulk um, now kind of like a third option here it really depends on what your hand looks like but definitely get a one drop down if you can um, two, you want to see, you know, another one drop, maybe a two drop, ideally armor or goose three, you know, Cosmo, maybe another one drop, maybe a two drop Four, you can go moon girl. And ideally you're hitting she Hulk, uh, because on five, you're going to skip. And then six, you're going to play two she Hulks plus whatever else you can play. Um, what here, what I liked to play was I like to keep Ant-Man in my hand. If I knew that I could play him. Um, so as in that, that first option there. You could play two She-Hulks, Infinite, and an Ant-Man all in the same turn. This third option, I love playing Ant-Man on a lane that I know I'm going to fill. Um, so play an Ant-Man. Maybe you're playing uh, you know, Iceman. Maybe you've got Moon Girl and you just need to get some power down. Maybe you've kept Cosmo to counter something there going on. Um, but those are kind of the three main lines of play that I saw when using this deck. Now kind of just running over these cards real quick. Uh, First up, I've got Sunspot, and he is a potential lane winner, but he does need some help. He needs some protection in the form of armor. Um, Ant-Man, like I said, I like to use him as a late turn extra power, so keeping him towards one of my final turns and then putting him on a lane, I know I'm going to fill. Uh, next up, we've got Iceman and Korg, just solid turn one plays that can disrupt your opponent. Then you've got Psylocke. So Psylocke, I feel, is a, a pretty good combo card here. So... Ideally, you use her on four, or if you play her on three, then you can play magic on five if you know you're going to extend the game. Magic on four, I'm sorry. Knowing that you're going to extend the game, looking for that She-Hulk Infinite on turn seven. Uh, Goose, again, small lane protection. Maybe you've got to play Iceman Korg. Goose can come down and protect them. Maybe you go Goose Cosmo, Ant-Man, Iceman, and that's all of a sudden a pretty good lane. Um of course, Cosmo, he is counter to the opposition, and he's also protection for your big things. If you've got to play She-Hulk early, he can protect her. If you know you're going to play Infinite, all of a sudden, that's a safe lane. Moon Girl, ideally, she's there to copy She-Hulk, and if she does, you can copy some one-drops like Ant-Man, and you can play multiple one-drops as well. 
magic is there to extend the game for the she hulk infinite combo and then of course she hulk and infinite are your power those are your game winners the cards that you want to drop down to make sure that you get that win um so i really did enjoy this deck i probably used this one the least out of any of the three but it was a fun deck to play it just it was a little bit tougher to use as we started seeing those leeches and those arrows coming out but overall a really really strong deck all right, so looking at the deck that I used the second most during my climb to infinite was the the, the Shiri Zero deck. Um, and, you know, Zero doesn't really, he's not really used too much, but, um, you know, I thought he was going to be used more, which is kind of why I named it the way I did. But uh, kind of looking at these lines of play, our first option is easy. It's, you want to go Sunspot on one, Zabu on two. That allows you to get Wong down on three, Shuri on four. I love to skip turn five, knowing that my last turn I'm dropping She-Hulk and I'm dropping Taskmaster in the same turn. I felt like that was the toughest one for any of my opponents to counter. Now again, running into those arrows, running into those leeches, caused me to kind of stay away from this deck a little bit later on. You know, in the late, um, the late 80s and 90s, this deck was really a little bit harder to play just because of those cards coming out. Um, but really good helping me climb up to that point. Um, kind of my second option here. You know, you're going Sunspot, Zabu again if you can. Of course, allowing Wong Shuri, Red Skull Taskmaster. Um, you know, Red Skull's a little bit exposed here, so maybe, maybe you can get some armor down somewhere in there. Maybe, you know, you don't have Wong, but you've got Shuri. So ideally, you need to kind of piece these together, but that's my ideal second line option. And then third... You, you've got the Black Panther combo. So you've got Wong, Black Panther, Zola. You can play Sunspot on one, Armor two, three. You can drop anything that you want. Maybe it's Lizard. Maybe it's Zero. Um, well, probably not Zero if you're playing Wong on four, but you kind of get the idea. Maybe you go, maybe three is Zero into Lizard. But um, that is, you know, kind of the third option there. This one is a little bit tougher because it is over the course of three turns. And, you know, an Enchantress, a Cosmo, something comes down and all of a sudden this combo doesn't work and you're in trouble. So those are kind of the three lines of play that I saw with this deck. Um, I did feel that this deck was a little bit stronger than that Sheathanaut deck just because if you can get Shuri down and you've got uh, She-Hulk Taskmaster, you can skip a turn and you're not too worried about it. So, you know, you can kind of take your time and see where they play and then look to counter that. Um, so now kind of looking at the cards again, Sunspot, same deal. He's a potential lane winner in this deck. Zero, he can cancel out Red Skull's effect. He's a little bit late, extra power, maybe turn six. It's actually uh, zero Red Skull. You're dropping 18. That's still pretty strong. Not your ideal turn six play, but also not a bad one. Zero can also cancel Lizard, which is a solid early game play, you know, a turn three play. So ultimately um, a couple uses there for zero. Zabu, he's there for discounts. He, you want to be able to get Wong down so that you can get Shuri down. Um, armor, Sunspot protection, and he's also large protection. So maybe you've got to play that Red Skull early. You play him early into an armor lane, and then you can copy with Taskmaster, knowing that your Red Skull is safe. Uh, Lizard, he's a solid two. He can be canceled by zero, so he's got pretty good synergy there. And he's also like a last, last resort. Let's say you don't hit Black Panther, you don't hit Red Skull, you don't hit She-Hulk. Doubling up Lizard is, is not terrible. I mean, it's 10 power, and if you double the double, he's 20 power. That's actually pretty strong for a two drop. So um, you can still piece things together with Lizard, which makes him a pretty good play here. Shuri, of course, she makes the deck go. You want to be doubling something. Um, that's where the power comes in. Taskmaster, he's that extra copy of She-Hulk or Red Skull um, to get you that power in multiple lanes, splitting it up. Maybe it's in the same turn, but he's that, you know, he's part of your power there. Black Panther, he gives you combo options. So you've got the Wong Black Panther Zola combo, or maybe you go Black Panther Zola. That's still very, very strong in of itself. Uh, maybe you hit black panther with shuri and then use zola there are just options here so black panther has a lot of synergy with this deck i can see why he's in it and he, he seems pretty good uh next up is red skull and he's pure power um a lot of the times i wasn't able to zero him out when i was doubling him 
but most of the time it was fine. If it was 30 power, it sometimes got a little bit close depending on how many cars they had in that lane. But if he was 60 power, it, it, did, it didn't matter. So the Red Skull is pure power. Zola is here, of course, for the Wong Black Panther Zola combo, but also he's another option to kind of split up your power. So let's say you don't have a way to copy Red Skull, you don't have Taskmaster, but you've got Zola. Great, it does the same thing. It splits him up, it moves lanes. But you do kind of need to plan a little bit further ahead if you're going to use Zola because you don't want to fill up some of those lanes if you need a spot to uh, to Zola something into. And then, of course, She-Hulk in this deck, she is pure power. Um, sometimes maybe you need to use her a little bit early. Maybe you're using her on turn four, and then maybe turn five is, you know, Red Skull, Zola, Red Skull, um, you know, then turn six is taskmaster you've got options here but she hulk can be used in a ton of ways and she is a super super strong card so overall i felt this deck was probably the second strongest deck that i actually used during my climb again though when those leeches started to hit is this deck really struggled because you're waiting until your last couple of turns to win the game and if your opponent knows that the only way that you can win is by uh you know splitting up your power arrow all of a sudden looks pretty good if they know that you've been holding out all of a sudden leech looks pretty good so overall i felt this deck was super super strong i really did enjoy playing it but again i kind of had to um kind of let this one go as we continued to climb the ranks um but let's go take a look at uh, the third and final deck that i used in my climb to infinite all right so those of you that have been watching some of the videos will know um i have been playing galactus a bit and this deck is super, super, super strong. Um, you can kind of see in the, the name of this deck that when Galactus is played, all of a sudden your win rate goes from 63 to 77%. And I found that he was the best way to kind of counter those arrows, um, counter those leeches. So this was the deck that I ultimately ended up hitting infinite with. And there were a couple different play lines that um, I saw that really ended up working out well. I really, really think that these are some of the best cards you can use in a Galactus deck. I know there are other options out there. Some include like Wolverine, some include Spider-Man, but I think this has counters to all of those. And I think this deck is just super, super strong right now. Um, so I'm playing this deck, my ideal play line. I want to get hood down on one. Turn two, I'm skipping because I don't have any two drops and I want to save that demon. Turn three is wave because on turn four, you want to play Galactus. So that's your goal. Get Galactus down as early as you can. Give yourself some time. That's why turn five, magic comes in. Extend the game one. Your opponent is not going to want to fill that lane for turn six, which means you've basically got a free hobgoblin on that turn. Maybe it's a green goblin, whatever. You can kind of set up to win the game on turn seven. Now on turn seven here, you kind of got... I've just got win. And what that means is maybe they have stacked power as well. Maybe they've got death in there. Maybe they've got, you know, a Chavez that they played. So you use the cards that you have to win and you kind of need to plan ahead depending on what cards you have in your hand. So Shang-Chi, super, super powerful. Shuri definitely won me my fair share of games. Green Goblin, you know, stuffing up their board. Maybe you've got to go demon into Shang-Chi or something like that. Maybe turn turn seven is shuri into wave you don't want to get too big but you need just a little bit of power to make sure that you stay out of reach so turn seven it really depends on what they play down but almost every single time that i went galactus on four magic on five i ended up winning the game um so i really feel like that is the strongest line of play now the second line isn't isn't too bad it's hood of course and then you're skipping two three is going to be electro Four, you want a Hobgoblin if you have it. Maybe it's a Green Goblin. Maybe it's even Shuri. But you've got to play something on turn four because turn five, you're going to Galactus one of those lanes. Ideally, you Galactus a Hobgoblin or a Green Goblin lane. Um, but sometimes you just don't have those cards in your hand. And kind of the same rules apply for turn six. Um, you know, maybe you have to play Hobgoblin into Hood. Or not Hood, Hobgoblin into a Demon. Or maybe you've got to slam a destroyer and hope that 15 is enough. Maybe you've got death in your hand and you can slam death and a demon and something else. Um, it, you know, Really, you've got to see what they play in that lane and react to it in the way that is best going to help you win the game. Um, so that's kind of was my second favorite line. Most of my games I ended up extending because I saw that you know being able to get maybe a destroyer down or something like that, adding power to a lane um, in a different way 
definitely put a little bit of pressure on my opponents. Um, now the third option is a turn six Galactus. Definitely a little bit risky, but you kind of take some of that risk out there with um, um, this play line. So one, of course you're going Hood because he's your only option. If you don't have him, you're skipping. Same with turn two, you're most likely skipping. Turn three, ideally, you're playing Green Goblin on a lane maybe that they've already got a, you know, a one drop in or a two drop. Um, turn four is going to be Shuri and then turn five, Ideally, you're hobgoblining the same lane that you green goblined. Um, that's going to be super tough to come back from for them. If there's a minus 16 power goblin and a minus 3 power green goblin, and then you Galactus that lane, you're in really, really good shape. Um, now, the same thing kind of applies. Leech, arrow, definitely ruin that game plan, which is why I really kind of pushed for that, um, you know, that first first line of play option if i could second option was great but still arrow could hit you overall though this was by far the best deck that i played um suit was able to climb super easy over the last um two three days i, I think i gained over man it, it had to have easily i think i went from like 82 to to infinite in like a day and a half um so this deck is super super strong but kind of just looking at the cards that we've got here We've got the hood, and I love it because he's destroy value, and you get that demon. And that demon can be super, super valuable. Um, next up is Green Goblin. He can keep your side clean. He mucks up their side a little bit, gives you a Galactus target, um, you know, a lane to target. Electro is just ramp. You know, maybe you hit Hobgoblin on four, Magic on five, and you're extending the game that way. If you can get Electro down, you've got other ways to win other than just Galactus. Uh, next up, you've got Wave, and, you know, he, Wave, she cheats out Galactus. That's her main use. Otherwise, I have used her on turn six, where I've gone, um, you know, well, not turn six, four of my turn six. Wave on five, and then because enough things were destroyed, I was able to get Destroyer and Death down, or you mess up their turn six play. Wave, still super, super great. Uh, Shuri, she's kind of like flexible utility. So sometimes I used her to give him a huge hobgoblin. Sometimes it was, um, you know, she was used on magic. A uh, five, six, and extending the game seems pretty good because your opponent's planning for a six turn game and all of a sudden it's seven turn. So it kind of catches them by surprise. Maybe Shuri was played after Galactus was played to double, uh, you know, a death and get you a 24 power death. Um, Shuri was super, super strong in this deck. Shang-Chi is obviously to counter any of those big cards that your opponent's playing. Um, once Galactus comes down, they start thinking that they need to drop, you know, huge things on it. And having Shang-Chi won me so many games, I can't even count. Um, a lot of my games ended with, um, you know, a turn six Hobgoblin into turn seven Shang-Chi Demon. And you just win the game because they can't play anything and then you're destroying their thing. So super, super easy way to get basically a guaranteed win there. Um, so Shang-Chi was great. Hobgoblin kind of does the same thing as Green Goblin, just a little bit better, a little bit stronger. Um, yes, it doesn't come down as early, but uh, I wouldn't trade him for Spider-Man. I had Spider-Man come out against me a couple of times on these decks, but you've got ways to counter that and magic is the way to do that. So let's say you, uh, you know, let's say four you're able to get galactus down and on turn five i've had you know i've had people spider-man me on that lane snapping thinking they won little did they know my turn five was magic all of a sudden their spider-man doesn't matter and they're not going to play on that lane because they just spent a three power spider-man on that lane which frees up a goblin so either a green goblin can then come down or a hobgoblin and all of a sudden their you know guaranteed win in their mind is just a loss and it was a great way to gain cubes that way um so of course magic is there to kind of extend the game so even when i wasn't able to get galactus down being able to get magic down gave me enough time to kind of figure out what was my best way to win this game uh you know galactus is up next he's, he's just the game winner as you can kind of see Anytime he's played, my win rate skyrocketed up to nearly 80%, which is just insane. So most of the time, if I was getting Galactus down, I was snapping. And I was getting far more cubes than on the games where, you know, if I saw it was going to be a long shot, I would just retreat. Take a one cube loss, 
but then the next two games it'd be four cubes it'd be eight cubes um galactus is your game winner he is what helps you climb Chavez is in the deck for consistent draw and power. Maybe you don't hit death. Maybe you don't hit destroyer. So maybe your turn seven is Chavez into demon. That's still pretty good. Um, maybe, you know, you had to Shuri and then Chavez. I have definitely won a couple games that way. So Chavez is great in this deck as well. Destroyer. He's utility and extra power. So if you can, maybe you've got a wave on three, but you don't have Galactus. You can destroy your lane, and all of a sudden, you've got 15 power in a lane that they've got to go after. Um, you can then extend the game with magic and win through a different lane. So I really enjoyed having Destroyer in this deck. And then Death, of course, is she's just pure power, right? Um, most of the time, she was free or close to free. A lot of the times, I could hit her with a Shuri or play her alongside, um, you know, a Destroyer. And that's 27 power in one turn. So overall this was a super 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 strong deck that i used for the majority of my climb from i would say probably 88 all the way to infinite and um it was quick it was over just a day and a half i probably played you know i won far more games than i lost so if there's anything you take away from that that this is a very very strong deck and give it a shot um, it does kind of counter some of those decks that have arrow and leech in it because if you're getting galactus down on four then arrow doesn't matter they you know arrow is all of a sudden just seven power if they leech something well guess what that's great because now you just leeched my destroyer and now i've got 15 power there if it hits death all right you're you're a little hurt but hitting a destroyer awesome hitting a chavez you know doesn't really matter still pretty good but um you know leech and arrow all of a sudden lost some of their effectiveness against this deck so um I had a really, really smooth climb once I went up. I think I did, you know, I think I got up to 99 and 8, and then I lost like two games, dropped down to 99 and 1, and then all of a sudden I won my next two games, one being a 2-cube, and then the last one being a full 8-cube max to, uh, to make infinite. So these were the decks that I used. I hope some of y'all will give these a shot. Super, super strong, but uh, let me know. Um, I'd be happy to, to kind of help and talk through these decks more if anyone wants to talk about them. Um, but, hey, take a look at them, give them a shot, and let me know how they do. Until next time, though, remember, have some fun.